Hello everyone, especially to our educators and trainers. This is Dr. A. Welcome once again to Training Masters Edu Talks. As promised, today's video will focus on constructive alignment in the outcome-based teaching and learning. My references are the books of John Biggs and Catherine Tang and Paul Ramsden. Looking at these words, constructive alignment, we can reflect there are two principles involved. A constructivism or constructivist theory of learning and alignment between the intended learning outcomes, the teaching and learning activities, and the assessment tasks. This simple video, ladies and gentlemen, aims to help you design a course later on or review your existing course and convert it to a constructively aligned course or more popularly labeled as Outcomes-Based Teaching and Learning or OBTL. When we say OBTL, that is the system confined within the classroom, but when we say OBE or Outcomes-Based Education, we talk about the whole system of the organization. So our focus will be on the OBDL. So again, may I highlight constructive alignment. So the first component is constructive. Constructive because it is based on constructivist theory that learners use their own activity to construct their knowledge or other outcome. If you watched my previous video on designing ILOs, I mentioned what Tyler said, which was also the statement of Jules, which I agree that what is learned by the students are what they do not what the teacher does. So I repeat, it is what the students do that they learn, not what the teacher does. Therefore, it is the responsibility of the teacher to create a learning environment where the students are engaged to perform the tasks specified in intended learning outcomes of the course. The, the alignment in constructive alignment reflects the fact that the learning activities in the ILOs or intended learning outcomes which are expressed in verbs need to be activated or enacted by the students in the teaching to successfully achieve the outcomes and the learning activities must be activated in assessment tasks to verify that the outcomes has in fact been achieved or attained. Let's take an example for deeper understanding. Assuming the ILO is at the end of the course, the students must be able to reflect on learning in terms of working theories gained from the course. So what would be our TLAs and what would be our assessment task? In the previous video, I clearly stated that an ILO is a statement written from student's perspective indicating the level of understanding and performance they're expected to achieve as a result of engaging in the teaching and learning experience. In our example, reflect belong to higher cognitive level because the verb reflect requires students to apply the learning or framework they constructed as their reflective practice. So the next question is how students could be helped activate the verb reflect. To create an aligned TLAs for the ILO, a suggestion is given. So TLAs could be keep reflective journal, discuss with small groups or to study partner. Again, if the ILO is to reflect on learning in terms of working theories gained from the course, so teaching and learning activities can be keep reflective journal, discuss with small groups or to study partner. For the assessment task, it could be present selected parts of the reflective journal with comments and probably explain how the parts of diary presented or meet the ILO and then self-evaluate. For a simple illustration, if your ILO is requiring the students to explain a concept, then in TLAs, the students are expected to be explaining concepts, so not just once, but repeated explaining concepts. So first possible activity is to require the students to explain. Second activity must be an explaining. For the third time, if time permits, the students must be explaining. Why is this? It's because the ILO is for the students to explain. And for the mastery, there must be plenty of opportunity for the students to activate the ILO, which is actually explained. Then in assessment task, what do you think the students should be doing in the test? They must be explaining. So to summarize, if the ILO is to be able to explain concepts, your TLAs is explaining concepts, 
and assessment tasks is explaining concepts. So ladies and gentlemen, let's watch the illustration for better understanding of constructive alignment. Thank you very much for watching. If you have not yet subscribed to my video, please click that subscribe right now and that notification sign so that you get notified or you get updated of my latest video. Ladies and gentlemen, the next video is on designing, teaching and learning activities. I did my best, it wasn't much. I couldn't feel so, I tried to touch. I told the truth, I didn't come to fool you. And even though it all